In this video, we'll be looking at the problem called Fair Game. The problem says Lucas contemplates playing a new game, which involves tossing three coins simultaneously. He'll receive $15 if he obtains three heads, $10 if he obtains two heads, and $5 if the three coin tosses result in only one head. However, if he gets no heads when he tosses the three coins, he has to pay $30. He also has to pay $5 for each game he plays, regardless of the outcome. What is Lucas's expected gain, and whether the game is fair or not, and why, are the questions that were asked here. To get started with this problem, we need to be thinking about what kind of possibilities there are when we toss three coins, and in particular, which ones would Lucas, our person in our question, consider to be favourable outcomes. Well, a nice way to present the possible outcomes and favourable outcomes in a coin tossing experiment is to use a tree diagram. So let's construct one of those now using the information given in the question. Although we'd toss the coins simultaneously, if we were recording the data, we'd probably look at them one at a time. So let's think. The first coin could come up as either a head or as a tail. The second also as a head or a tail. And the third, again, will either be a head or a tail. Writing down all these possibilities, we can put together this tree diagram. Now looking along the branches of that tree, for example, along this branch, we can see that one of the outcomes would be head, 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 or three heads. If we look along another branch, the next one along, we get head, head, and a tail, or two heads. Moving along the remaining branches, we see head, tail, head, head, tail, 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 head, head, tail, head, tail, 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 head, and finally along the bottom branch, three tails, tail, tail, tail. If we think about it from Lucas's perspective, remember in the question he's interested in the number of heads obtained, and that tells him how much he wins or loses. So on the top we have three heads, then two, two again, one head, two heads, one head, one head, and finally zero heads. So this tree diagram has allowed us to see that there are eight possible outcomes when we simultaneously toss three coins. Now the favourable outcomes from Lucas's perspective of course refer to the number of heads that occur in each case. And of course we see that there's zero, one, two or three, just like we expect from the way the game is defined. Let's look at formalising this a little bit. We're going to let capital X be a random variable that represents the number of heads obtained when three coins are tossed. Now not only is this the formal language that we use for these kinds of probability questions, I think it also helps us to keep our thinking straight if we lay that down right from the start. Drawing together the information from the tree diagram, we can construct a probability table that tells us the probability that our random variable capital X is equal to each possible value of, of x, that being zero heads, one head, two heads, or three heads. Now looking back, we saw there were eight possible outcomes. Only one of those was to get zero heads, so we can say the probability of zero heads is one on eight. Similarly, there was one, two, three ways that we could get one head, so we have three on eight as our probability of one head. You'd see the same thing for two heads, there were three ways to do that and only one way to get three heads, so we have a one in eight chance there. We can also add in that extra information from the question, and that was the gain or loss to Lucas for each of those possible outcomes. Remember that he lost $30 if zero heads showed up, gained $5 for one head, 10 for two heads, and $15 if three heads showed up. Now we've got everything set up to help us with our first problem. What is Lucas's expected gain? It's at this point that things uh, differ a little bit from a standard expected value calculation. Normally with an expected value calculation, we'd write that the expected value of our random variable is given by the sum of the x multiplied by the probability that x is equal to little x. So in other words, we'd be multiplying 0 and 1 8, 1 and 3 8, 2 and 3 8, and 3 and 1 8, and adding the results together to give us an expected outcome in terms of the number of heads. Here in this problem, we're actually interested in the expected gain, not the expected number of heads. But the good thing is, we can calculate that in a very similar way, except instead of multiplying the probability by the number of heads, 
we're going to multiply it by the gain that corresponds with that number of heads. And that'll allow us to figure out an expected value for the gain from playing the game. Now it's a little informal, but the notation I'm going to use for that is the expected value of the gain is the expected value of the gain for x number of heads multiplied by the probability. Now I've copied the table down the bottom here so that we can refer to it. You can see that we're going to have minus $30 multiplied by a 1 on 8th chance plus $5 multiplied by the 3 eighths chance of getting one head, $10 by 3 eighths, and finally $15 by 1 eighth for getting three heads. Now we've just got to evaluate all of this. You can go away and do it on your calculator, but I think it's pretty quick because each of the fractions is divided by eight. We've already got a common denominator. Minus 30 by one is minus 30. Five by three is going to be 15. 10 by three is 30 and 15 by 1 is 15. We cancel, and you can see we've got a result of 30 on 8. We're in decimal form, which will be handy because we're talking about money, 3.75. So we can complete this piece by saying Lucas's expected gain is going to be $3.75 per game. Now remember the second part of the problem asked us, is this a fair game and why? Recall that the definition of a fair game says that a game is fair when the cost to play the game is equal to the expected return to the player. So let's compare those two. The question said that it costs Lucas $5 to play each time he wants to play the game. His expected return, or the expected value of his gain, we calculated to be $3.75. So we can conclude that the game is not fair. This game is not fair because it doesn't satisfy the definition of a fair game. The cost and the expected gain are different. As always, we should do a final check to make sure that we've fully answered the question. I'm pretty sure we have, but if we look back, we've calculated Lucas's expected gain, and we've also decided whether the game was fair or not, and said why. So this looks like this problem's complete.